Good afternoon, everyone. We'll be starting in next one minute. So we have people joining in. Mitali, hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Suma. Good afternoon, Sanskriti. You're back again. Great to see you, familiar. Uh, great to see familiar names here. Mitali, Sanskriti. Hi, Mohit. Hi, Tanishka. Welcome to Leap Scholars Q&A session. Let's go, may wait for more people to join in. Hi, Pulkit. Hi, Hiteshi. Right, for uh, today's session, we are going to do something different. Uh, we're not just focusing on one country here, but uh, we'll talk about uh, you know, uh, how to build your profile when you uh, are wishing to study abroad. And that is uh, the whole presentation is very generic and it kind of applies to every country you want to apply for, be it Australia, New Zealand, Canada, UK, Europe, you know, anywhere you want to study. Uh, it's very, uh, very, very important that uh, you have a relevant profile speci specifically when you're applying to top universities. And in today's session, we'll be covering that. Uh, Hi, Sri. Hi, Aman. Hi, Nisha. Hi, Madhu. Hi, Mitali. Uh, how to contact me? You can contact me through this session only. I'll uh, you try to contact on Leap Scholar, but didn't get a satisfactory answer. Uh, well, Mitali, I'll speak to someone in the team and get back to you on this. Uh, right. And uh, guys, for today's session, it's very important uh, that if you want to ask me questions, you please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to ask me questions, uh, subscribe to the channel and then you'll be able to post uh, live questions and I'll be answering them. Right. Uh, hi, Shampa. Hi, Mehek. Hi, Isha. Good afternoon. Right. So uh, before we start, like I said, in today's session, uh, it's very important that you first subscribe to the channel because you'll not be able to post questions in the live chat. So do that right away. And apart from that, uh, you guys must have seen my video uh, last week on 100% scholarships. Uh, do note that if you're thinking of applying to 100% scholarships, this is the right time to start because most of these scholarships would have deadlines, specifically UK in November. Talking about Chevening or great scholarships or Commonwealth scholarships, uh, do start preparing now, it's the right time. Similarly for Canada or Australia as well. Right, hi Musa, hi Ankita. Yes, Ankita, I'm going to evaluate profiles as well today. Cool, so uh, before we start, like I said, you know, I want to repeat it again, please subscribe to the channel uh, so that you can post questions. And uh, obviously you'll also, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be able to watch videos every, every week we come up with uh, on scholarships, part-time jobs, universities, you know, a lot of other stuff happening in study abroad uh, to keep yourselves updated. You can also join our Telegram channel, uh, which is Leap Scholar Study Abroad Aspirant. It's a comprehensive channel uh, to keep yourselves updated with uh, best universities to apply for, irrespective of the country you wish to study. Uh, obviously, you'll get updates on scholarships, uh, then education loans by Leap Finance, uh, and then obviously the most important aspect, which is your visa and the permanent residence, the residency options. Right. <clears throat> Great. So let's start uh, with our uh, presentation today. Other topic for the today is building your profile to study abroad. Right. So in this, I'm going to cover top seven ways to kind of, uh, you know, amplify and build your profile when you're applying to a top university or a college abroad. Uh, I would be covering seven ways, uh, starting with academics and education, uh, standardized tests, which includes your IELTS, PTE, TOEFL, GMAT, GRE. Uh, then we move on to internships and work experience, uh, the projects at college and school community service and volunteering, which is again, a very important aspect. 
uh, research papers, online courses and programs, and I'll uh, end with top uh, tips and tricks to kind of, uh, you know, uh, kind of amplify your profile. And I'll be doing live profile, profile evaluation in between, but I'll be taking most of your questions towards the end so that you guys can focus on the presentation as well. Right, so let's start. Uh, first academics and education so this is the first thing which is very very important when you apply on uh, you know uh, abroad because uh, you know like like in india obviously you know we have cutoffs for the colleges in du and you know other universities similarly uh, foreign universities they have cutoffs as well so uh, talking about academics and education here it's the first the first rule is to make sure that you're relevant uh, you have relevant background to your qualification. Let's say you are doing medical in your plus two or you have a medical undergraduate degree. Uh, make sure the course you're choosing uh, further, maybe your bachelor's degree or maybe your postgraduate degree, it's, it's pretty relevant, especially in uh, cases uh, for Canada because Canada is very, very particular on this, that your background has to be relevant to the qualification you have chosen to pursue. Uh, there, there would be some colleges that may offer you programs that may offer you offer letters, but trust me, uh, in the visa process, it kind kind of uh, it may create a hindrance for you. Uh, sometimes I've seen visa uh, visas being rejected as well. So make sure your academics and your education background is relevant to the qualification you've chosen. Uh, for top ranking institutions, high grades are generally required. So that's not a surprise when we talk about really high ranking universities, irrespective of the country, uh, you know, take uh, take US for, mat uh, for that matter, NYU, Columbia, you know, in Canada, we have UBC, Toronto, Waterloo, in Australia, we have, you know, group of eight universities, in UK, we have Russell Group, in New Zealand, we have University of Auckland, Otago, uh, Canterbury. Uh, all all universities which are top rankings top ranked in their in in, in their uh, countries they require high grades and that's a basic thumb rule we have to follow uh, so i would say when you're shortlisting universities you always shortlist universities as per your grades right so every university would have an entry requirement page you know on their website so make sure you check that before you apply because see uh, unlike india we have you know like in india we have uh, entrance tests for you know iits or iams or we talk about you know need for that matter je paper we have we have here uh, foreign universities generally evaluate you on your statement of purpose your overall profile your letter of recommendations barring a few institutions obviously but that is the major criteria so make sure make sure you know uh, uh, your your academic uh, grades they are uh, you know in line with the uh, university you're applying to so let's say if you're applying for something like uh, you know uh, let's say for canada i would say you know if you want to apply for waterloo which is again one of the uh, best universities for students who want to study engineering or sciences sciences related programs i would generally recommend uh, you know a highs of 85 to 90 percent Similarly, for the UK, if you want to go for Oxford, Cambridge, 95% uh, is generally expected. Uh, there are a couple of universities in the UK as well, like Edinburgh is there, they accept 85% plus. Similarly, it varies from country to country. Uh, ensure you meet minimum academic requirements, like I said, and don't waste time on applying to institutions that require higher grades. So uh, I get a lot of queries from students who are wanting to apply for, uh, let's say, you know, an engineering program at uh, Waterloo or maybe UBC in Canada or maybe, you know, Imperial College in London uh, uh, with, with, with a percentage of 85%. I would not say it's a bad percentage, but trust me, uh, uh, when I say that, uh, you know, minimum academic requirements have to be met primarily because these universities will not accept your application. So make sure you select relevant universities. So uh, to give you an idea here, uh, uh, Imperial College would generally require, you know, like 92, 93%, but uh, Edinburgh is a good university as well. They will accept you with 85% as well. So shortlist universities according to your grades. So uh, the general thumb rule here is for top universities, uh, if you want to aiming, if you, if you are aiming for top universities, irrespective of the country, 75% in your 12th and 65% in your UG. So that is the score we're looking at for top universities and for other universities, someone uh, who, who's not really keen on top universities, 
55% plus is the minimum recommended, I would say for 12th and 50% plus in UG. It kind of varies from university to university, but this is a general thumb rule. Moving on, uh, uh, we're talking about tests now, standardized tests. So uh, first, first thing we have to keep in mind is check the minimum requirements listed by the institution. So every university would have a minimum requirement in place. Like uh, when we talk about uh, Canada for that matter, uh, Canadian, Canadian colleges would require a six overall with six in each for, a, for an undergraduate program. But for an undergraduate program in Canadian universities, you would require 6.5 overall with six each, right? So it varies. Do check that before you start applying and make sure you have the appropriate English language test. And by appropriate, I mean, uh, not all the tests are accepted by all the universe, all the countries. So uh, I would say, I would say if you want to study abroad, IELTS is one of the uh, best tests to go for because it is accepted by most countries. But in case uh, you're not, you're not, uh, you're thinking of applying uh, to certain, certain countries and you're not keen on IELTS, then I would say if you want to study in US, you can uh, choose between TOEFL and IELTS. Uh, if you want to uh, study in Australia, New Zealand and UK, uh, apart from IELTS, you can do PTE as well, because most universities will accept Australia and New Zealand, all the universities accept PTE, but in the UK, there are certain universities that that will not accept PTE. So uh, just just check that before you start applying. And for Canada, like I would say, like a lot of students come to me, sir, can I uh, go for a PT or TOEFL for Canada? You surely can, but uh, but I, I think uh, for Canada, uh, what what matters more is when you apply for the visa. If you don't have IELTS score, you would have to go for a non SDS uh, you know scheme, which is non student direct scheme and. I'll tell you what is SDS and non-SDS. In SDS, the, the processing time is faster and the visa chances are higher. So if you have IELTS score, IELTS is one of the recommended tests by the Canadian High Commission for student visas. So uh, if you want to go under SDS scheme, I would highly recommend that you give IELTS. Some universities might give you a uh, offer letter with the PT and TOEFL as well, but for the visa, I think uh, IELTS is highly recommended for Canada. Talking about GMAT and GRE, uh, I have discussed that on many occasions that a lot of top universities will accept, uh, you know, expect GMAT and GRE scores from you. Uh, however, this has changed a bit, uh, you know, during this, these COVID times wherein some universities have waived off, but that again varies from university to university. You can check with your counselor on the same. Uh, for students who are wishing to pursue an undergraduate program in the US, uh, SAT is required. Uh, by certain universities and uh, there are some universities which have waived uh, SAT for this year because of COVID. So just check with your counselor. So SAT is, op uh, SAT is uh, optional in many universities, uh, you know, especially for, you know, during these times. Uh, the basic thumb rule here is standardized tests, higher the score, stronger the profile. So higher the score and stronger the profile. Why do I say that? So uh, let's take an example here. Uh, you know, let's take an example of a GMAT score here. So a GMAT score of 650 plus is considered good. And a lot of universities, even the top ranking ones would say that, you know, 60, 650 GMAT, they accept. But uh, that will vary as per the applicant's profile, the overall applicants, you know, the whole profile of applicants. There might be a lot of students who have 700 plus so you would be competing with them. So higher the score, higher are the chances of landing in your dream school. Right, so I'll answer some questions. Uh, let me just cover one more slide here, which is work experience. Uh, again, this is more appropriate for someone who's going for a master's degree. Uh, so some universities may require work ex for certain programs and that uh, those programs are generally MBA programs and make sure you have relevant work experience to your degree qualification, right? So uh, it's, it's very, very important that the job you do after your graduation, it relates to the qualification you have. That kind of strengthens your profile. Moreover, when you work after your graduation, you also get to have professional references from your office where you work. That also kind of uh, works very well to boost your profile.
and if you work with a leading brand or a company in your field let's say for business students someone who's you know worked in a big four company like ey kpmg pwc deloitte uh, or maybe you know <clears throat> uh, you want to go into consulting in the future so working with these brands obviously is going to place you higher than most other applicants apart from that someone who's wanting to go into let's say you know advertising or marketing you know you have a lot of options like you know all these ad agencies like ogilvy and mather is there jw uh, jwt is there similarly for engineering people we have a lot of big brands in india larsen and tubro is there you know just just make sure that that your profile and your work experience and your qualification is relevant this is especially in case of canada uk is gets pretty flexible uk is is pretty flexible that ways uh, but for canada you have to uh, make sure that your whole profile is relevant to make sure that you get the visa because that's that's a major major factor in canada next up uh, internships internships again uh, very very important especially when you're going for a masters degree if you get in, get to get an option to uh, you know intern with a certain employer when you're studying at uh, you know at an undergraduate level it can help you with uh, with your uh, profile when you when you uh, apply for a masters degree similarly i have seen there is a growing trend here a lot of undergraduate applicants also uh, do internships uh, during their 12th standard so i have some students you know who are going for computer sciences and you know who are going for business programs and who are going for accounting and finance programs they have you know a uh, kind of uh, done internships with uh, relevant employers in the field so that also kind of works in your favor and lastly the most important part is make sure that you document everything document everything by that i mean your work ex and your internships most employers obviously when you're working full time you'll get your experience certificate you get your salary salary slips you get your offer letters and your leaving letters make sure you have any everything in place and for internships most employers would be happy to give you a certificate or a letter of recommendation as well make sure that you document it right so i'll <clears throat> quickly answer a few question questions here uh i'm not really sure what's uh, fox hound i'm not really sure what's your real name um, okay sorry my name is shorya and i want to pursue defense and strategic uh, studies in kings college london uh, kings college london shorya would require a percentage uh, if you're applying for a, a bachelor's degree i would say 85% plus and uh, for ielts i would say you know seven bands higher seven plus uh because kings college is again a very very reputed college it's ranked among top uh, 15 in the world uh, scholarships at the bachelor's level they're not many uh, to be honest in the uk but uh, if you're going for a masters level program then uh, i would say there are a couple of scholarships which are open now shevening is one of them it's again a very prestigious scholarship for uh, someone who who is wanting to study uh, a masters level program it's a fully funded scholarship uh, tuition fee is paid your living stipend is paid your airfare is paid everything is paid right uh, mithali i think uh, sports sciences mithali i think i had a word with you on this uh, in the previous uh, session as well say sports sciences uh, us i i would i see if you want to stay back uh, to be honest uh someone who's from a stem background uh i would i would recommend us to them because us is more uh, receptive of someone from a you know science and technology engineering and mathematics but for sports sciences i would still stress upon australia uh this this is primarily because i have i have a lot of students who have studied in australia sports sciences programs and if you look at the qs uh, world university rankings as per subject you'll find most australian universities on the top so i would still say uh, check out australia once uh, mayur is asking which country has a great scope in pharmacy hands down canada but make sure your profile is relevant and uh, if you if you have a four year degree then you go you can go for a masters degree otherwise you can go for a post graduate certificate or a diploma which is from one to two years and also uh, mayur i would suggest if you can uh, choose for a, uh, for a co program it will help you earn as well at the same time it will place you better when you when you graduate <clears throat> sorry i i have a sore throat today uh, 
Hiteshi is asking physiotherapy. Physiotherapy, Hiteshi, I think uh, both UK and Canada are good options. Physiotherapy primarily, it's because it's a health sciences program for someone who's into health sciences background. Uh, I would I would highly recommend UK as well because UK has good options and uh, obviously uh, you know for health sciences graduates settling down in the UK is not uh, uh, you know much of a problem. Uh, <clears throat> next up we have Masoom scholarships for September intake are going to stop. Uh, see September intake is already gone, uh, but for next year definitely you have time. Like I said, uh, if you're going for a master's degree, then uh, you have Chevening, you have uh, great scholarships, you have Commonwealth scholarships, which are again open. You can check that out. Uh, Riddhi is asking which master's course has more opportunities in Canada. Uh, Riddhi, that will entirely matter, uh, you know, uh, as per the province you're going to. So let's say if you want to go to Alberta, Alberta is basically Calgary, Edmonton, uh, that province is very, uh, I would say, uh, uh, the most in demand course would be oil and gas because uh, that's primarily, you know, the major industry there. But obviously, talking about uh, oil and gas, there are some other, other, uh, you know, uh, you know, supporting, I would say, fields which are in demand. Like obviously, you know, they would need managers. They would need, uh, you know, someone from, uh, you know, chemistry. You know, everything which kind of relates to the whole thing. Uh, so you can choose Alberta for oil and gas and related, uh, you know, uh, fields. If you want to go to Saskatchewan, it's again, uh, Saskatchewan is known for its agriculture. Uh, if you want to go to Ontario, then a uh, business course or a management course or a digital marketing course makes more sense. Finance course makes more sense because Toronto is one of the leading financial hubs in Canada. If you want to go to British Columbia, then again, Vancouver is known for finance, accounting, marketing, all these fields, as well as tourism. Uh, but if you're looking at something, uh, you know, uh, if you want to go to a more relaxed area, and uh, with, with more options uh, in, in terms of, you know, permanent residency or work visas or provincial nomination programs, I would say go for Atlantic Canada. Atlantic Canada comprises of uh, four provinces. Uh, Nova Scotia is there, Prince Edward Island. Uh, then we have uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, I'm forgetting the fourth name. Uh, so Atlantic Canada, you can check that out. Uh, next up. PhD in the US, Shri. See, uh, I think I'll answer uh, PhD questions for once and all. Uh, I have been getting a lot of queries on my videos as well, you know, about PhDs, how to apply in, you know, and why we cannot help you with PhDs. See, PhD uh, applications work on a very, very different level, right? I'll share that uh, on, on a personal experience. So when I finished my master's degree, I was also a potential PhD candidate. So what I did first was, uh, you know, during uh, my master's degree, I was I was uh, uh, working on my research proposal, and then I started contacting the professors in the universities I was wishing to apply for. And I know the process is very lengthy; it's very tardy; it takes time. But uh, until unless you have a supervisor to supervise your degree, you supervise your PhD, you'll not be able to apply. And that is the reason PhD, PhD applications, we at Leap Scholar cannot help you with that primarily because this process has to go through you because that's how it kind, kind of works everywhere. Uh, next up, we have, uh, I'm in 12th class right now, Mehek. I have commerce with maths. Please suggest me good countries and courses. Mehek, I would say if you have commerce with maths, uh, uh, if you if you're looking at top universities uh, in Canada, I would say UBC, McGill, uh, Toronto, Alberta, Manitoba, SFU, they're good universities. Uh, and if you want to go, wanting to go to UK, then obviously the options are endless. There are like a lot of universities in top hundred which you can choose. If you're wanting to go to a college, then obviously uh, in Canada there are a lot of options available. And I would say if you go to Canada, everyone who wants to go to Canada, I would highly recommend co programs to them. So, similarly, for you as well, uh, co program. Apart
apart from that if you want to kind of uh, do something else apart from business management you can also choose from advertising or fashion management is good uh, fashion man management again you don't have to create to be creative for it but you know you can that's that's a growing growing field in canada apart from that you can also choose from hospitality management uh, next up i'll move on to uh, the next slide which is the projects i'll answer the questions after a few slides uh, projects uh, working on the projects relevant to your subject area is a major boost so that means when you are at school or college you do get an option or you do get a, uh, get an opportunities to uh, work on a project with your professor or you know with with the independent team or anything like that make sure you participate so if you if you're thinking of you know starting your study abroad journey next year like you know 2022 intake for canada or uk or any other country for that matter make sure you participate in school projects you make sure to participate in some you know uh, projects at college as well uh, uh, when we talk about projects it's always essential that you highlight your role so what you have actually done in that project and what kind of skills you develop so universities would actually look at uh, two major skills i would say which is team working and leadership so these are the two major skills which portray you as uh, you know as as a better applicant apart from that obviously communication skills soft skills they are in they are in demand as well so when you when you work on a project like this and when you kind of uh, you know uh, work with multiple people that is again uh, very very uh, I would say it gives a major boost to your profile. Another one important aspect I would want to uh, tell you here is uh, that's from my personal experience and as well as, you know, how things are going on right now, because, you know, we are, we are becoming a global world. So it's very essential that, uh, you know, if you get a chance to work with the cross-cultural team, I would say, you know, maybe you work on a project with someone from, you know, uh, US or maybe China or maybe Thailand or something. When you work with people from different cultures, it kind of portrays you as a, you know, cross-culturally adaptable person. So that also kind of works in your favor. So when I was applying for jobs after my graduation, I studied in UK and, and New Zealand. You know, I had friends from all over the world. That was one skill I had. And I think it has, it has, given, it has given me a very, very big advantage in my career so far. You know, I can work with multiple uh, teams across borders. You know, it, I know, I'm comfortable working with someone from China or Russia or anywhere in Europe. So I think that's, that's a major factor. Uh, do get uh, do make sure that if you if you get an option like that, uh, make sure you make sure you uh, you know pursue that. Next up, uh, highlight your achievements and milestones. So what you achieved, maybe you know you were you were on say on a sales project or anything like that. What were your achievements, right? That is again a very very important uh, thing to highlight and milestones. What you achieved basically. So everything kind of uh, makes you a very well-rounded person for university application. Uh, next up, this is, this is the most important thing I tell all my students specifically who are willing to apply to a top ranking college. So uh, I think I answered a question for King's College here, uh, someone who's willing to apply for King's College or something like that. See, community service and volunteering is one of the most neglected factors by Indian students. As in, I, I see when I went abroad, that was back in uh, 2006. I even I didn't know, to be honest, you know, because in India, we don't have that kind of, uh, I would say, uh, exposure uh, initially that time, you know, back in the day, we didn't have even today. Like if I talk about metro cities, people know that. You know, parents are much more aware that community service and volunteering plays an important role in your career. But uh, even in, you know, like small towns, uh, people are still not aware of it. So make sure, you know, you, you do pursue a community service and volunteering project. So uh, for that, I would say, you know, you can identify charities. You don't have to work with some, uh, you know, uh, a very big multinational NGO or something like that. You can look, you can identify local charities, NGOs and other organizations you can volunteer for, you know, within your area and volunteering uh, doesn't mean really, you know, uh, you have to uh, go on the ground and, you know, maybe help with cleaning or anything. It can be anything, anything. So I'll give an idea here, you know, someone who's, if you can, if you're, if you're good at writing, right, why not you actually uh, pursue something with an NGO that you can write a social media post for them. Maybe you can, you can write blogs for them. That is again a volunteering experience. It can be anything. 
it can be on the ground it can be you know work from home anything you know uh, how however you want to work but make sure that you have some experience in your kitty uh, for community service and services and volunteering and you know why because most organizations will will be happy to offer you a certificate or a letter of recommendation and that is going to majorly boost your profile because most universities top ranking ones they value uh, your uh, you know uh, your skill skills outside academics so this is something which is outside academics it will give them an idea that there is something uh, in the world which drives you to make this world a better place so i would say highly uh, i would highly recommend uh, the, uh, everyone to have some experience in this uh, some possible areas you can explore include animal rights human rights child welfare healthcare uh, poverty alleviation there are a lot of lot of uh, uh, you know options especially you know after covid we have uh, you know lot of uh, ngos working for covid relief that is again you know one of the major uh, profile boosters next up uh, we're talking about three more things and before that i'll take a few questions Sharad Kumar, I'm currently working in an IT firm. Uh, I'm planning for master's in data sciences and business analytics, but my work is not related to data science. Will I be able to get admission? See, you're working in an IT firm. So in that case, I would say uh, somehow you can relate to it, but uh, to strengthen your profile, uh, I would say pursue some online programs, uh, you know, in data sciences, business analytics that it, that can uh, work for you. But here, uh, the major challenge would be what countries uh, will accept you. So I think UK will be the most flexible option, followed by Australia and New Zealand, uh, and then Canada. Uh, Divya is asking, uh, Bachelor in Arts, which course I can go for after completing my Bachelor of Arts and what would be the requirements? Uh, Divya, I would need to know what, what are your subjects and, uh, you know, uh, that's, uh, I, I cannot say uh, until unless I know the subjects. Uh, Janvi is asking success rate of non-SDS visa. Uh, I, to be honest, you know, I, 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 uh, I used to do visas before, but uh, trust me, non-SDS, I will not recommend to anyone primarily because the processing is very slow. And like I said, you know, the visa success rate is uh, low as well. So as long as you can go for SDS, please do that. Please do that. It's a one time thing. Once your visa gets, gets rejected, you know, it kind of uh, hampers your overall profile. You know, you can apply again. I'm not denying that, but make sure, you know, if you can, if you can go for SDS, please go for it, go for SDS. Uh, Asha is asking uh, PhD uh, proposal matters or research experience of published papers. I think Asha proposal matters more. Uh, yeah, but if you're applying for scholarships or you know other stuff, then obviously your published papers would also uh, kind of help you. Uh, Aman, uh, should I do online certificate courses? Aman, I'm going to cover this in the presentation. Just keep uh, watching. Uh, next. Uh, Sai Kalyan Tarun, what scholarships are available for masters in US uh, for CS? <clears throat> what do we have to uh, do to acquire them? Uh, that's a very, very broad topic. Uh, Tarun, I, I would say, uh, see, I, 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 I cannot remember all the scholarships on top of my mind, to be honest. And plus, US is to totally not my forte. Uh, but uh, I would recommend, uh, you know, depending on your percentage one thing Fulbright scholarship is pretty good that is again for master's level it's a fully funded scholarship but it's very competitive apart from that you can check uh, check the universities you are applying to so most of them would offer you some sort of scholarship for sure uh, and plus obviously for computer science uh, us is a good option to go for uh, lisa panjwani is asking which country is best for studying mim uh, see lisa i would say Canada is a good option, but uh, like I said, you would need a four years bachelor's degree or a three years bachelor's degree plus a one year postgraduate qualification to qualify for an MIM program in a top university in Canada. But if you don't want, if you're not willing uh, to do that, UK is a good option. MIM, brilliant, brilliant uh, courses available. Uh, 
you know, obviously one year masters and a two years PSW as well. If you're uh, also, I would recommend Australia. Um, again, you know, Australia, New Zealand, you know, they're closed right now primarily because of COVID situation, but we expect them to open for the next uh, intake. That is uh, July 2022. It's still in the pipeline. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure how it kind of unfolds, but uh, Australia is very good option for MIM. There are good, uh, good business schools in Australia, like Monash University is there, University of Melbourne's Melbourne Business School, UNSW Business School. Uh, then we have University of Sydney, University of Western Australia. And the best part about Australia is uh, most universities, including the top ones, will offer you 20 to 30 percent minimum waivers on tuition fee if you if you meet certain percentages. And most universities have vice chancellor scholarships or you know Australia postgraduate scholarships. I'm I'm not really sure about the names. They might have changed now because you know over the last one year things have changed. But most uh, Australia is one of the best option for someone who's wanting to go for a scholarship, both undergraduate and postgraduate. Even the uh, you know uh, tier uh, uh, tier two universities would offer you some sort of scholarship for sure. And that that amounts to close to like 10,000 pounds. I can guarantee that. Next up, uh, Archana, my grades are 64% uh, BE Bachelor's of Engineering, 64%. Can you suggest a good university in Canada which will accept this score? My IELTS span is 7.5. Archana, your score is good. There are a lot of universities which uh, will accept your score. Uh, now that will depend on which uh, area you want to go to. So BE, I'm not really sure which was your major subject. So if you if you want to go for uh, something like computer sciences or something like that, then I would say GTA, uh, that is uh, Greater Toronto Area around Ontario, Vancouver uh, is a good option. Uh, Montreal, again, is a good option. But again, Montreal, uh, you know, uh, I, I think French is a little bit of a barrier, although not much, but it is. Apart from that, uh, universities in Alberta, uh, University of Alberta, University of Saskatchewan, University of Calgary are very good, uh, very uh, uh, good options. Uh, Masoom scholarship for September intake. I told you September 2022 intake. I would need to know which country you want to go to, uh, which course you want to go for, and that varies as per university to university. Uh, then we have tech and fin for second, 30 seconds. That's interesting. Uh, I have relevant experience of three years, but only 7.89 CGPA. Can I apply for Imperial College London? Uh, I think it would be tricky, but uh, if you want to apply for a top college in the UK with this CGPA, uh, Imperial College might accept you. You can try. See, that depends on your overall profile, not just, uh, but I think um, you do meet the uh, minimum academic requirements for sure but uh, it will entirely depend on the cohort cohort as in how many students are applying and what are their profiles uh, i would suggest you can look at other options as well uh, uh, you can look at edinburgh you can look at durham durham is a very very good university university of bath is very good university uh, cardiff is good nottingham is a very good university labro is good labro is very uh, I think uh, going by your channel name, Tech and Fin, I think Labro, uh, you are from engineering or a sciences background. So I think Labro is a good university as well. Uh, Pragya is asking, can you suggest a good scholarship for a graduate architecture program? Uh, Pragya, I'm not really sure which country you're wanting to go to, but like I said, uh, scholarships, if you're looking at 100% scholarships, very, very tricky, very, very intense. Uh, but if you are willing for a partial waiver or a tuition fee waiver or something like that, uh, architecture is pretty good in Australia. <clears throat> and plus you can get scholarship. Uh, Mithali, hi sir, which country is best for studying masters in psychology? Uh, Mithali, I, I would say UK and Canada both. Uh, but in the UK, uh, it's, it's mandatory that if you have to practice as a psychologist after you graduate, your degree should be accredited by the British Psychological Society. And you cannot specialize in any field until unless you have a conversion program. Uh, Aman, I think that answers your question as well. Best country for psych psychology. Uh, I checked about Australia, but I have only two options, either USA or Canada, Mithali. Uh, Mithali, I cannot. Uh, okay. 
so i would say uh, if you want to go for a sports sciences program then uh, from us and canada i would highly recommend us i think i have shared an option some options with you on on uh, youtube comments uh, i think you uh, did you did comment on my video and i have given you a few options in the us right so uh, next up uh, let's get back to the presentation again uh, we have research papers and published work. This is uh, for someone who wants to go for a master's by research or PhD, right? Uh, master's by research, as in you don't have taught classes, you just have, uh, you know, research papers, or maybe you have to work on your assess uh, assignments and something like that. So uh, in this case, your research papers and published work can actually help you build your profile. It gives you a major boost. And plus, when you're going for a research program, the most important skill you should have is your research skill and writing skills. So when you have a research paper published, it kind of portrays your independent thinking as well as it tells the uh, committee that you, you have uh, relevant research and writing skills and that is why you got published. Also, uh, it will help the professors and the, you know, the person uh, or the admissions committee to decide uh, whether you're relevant to the program you're applying for. So let's say you have a published paper in uh, uh, HRM or, you know, let's say a published paper in uh, augmented reality or, you know, uh, anything like that. And you're applying for the same program, it will show that you have the relevant background, you have the relevant information about the subject. And that's how you can actually, uh, you know, highlight your profile more and you there, there, are, there are chances that you can land up, uh, you know, the, the place in the university. Moreover, uh, you know, with your research paper and published work, because, you know, when you go for a master's by research or a PhD degree, this is for all PhD program, uh, uh, you know, someone who's wishing to go for a PhD or a master's by research, this is for everyone who's commenting here. Uh, it's very important that uh, when you, uh, when you are, uh, as, as you know, when you work, when you, when you study as a research student at a university, the, the most, the most crucial aspect uh, the professors look at is is whether you are you know you will be able to contribute to the research community of that university right so uh, i would say like uh, if you're if you're uh, willing to uh, say do a research program in data sciences or maybe something like computer sciences uh, london school of economics is not going to be a good option although they do op uh, offer a data sciences program but it's more of a social sciences management and economic school Although it's a top ranked school, but I will not say it's relevant. In that case, I would say if you're uh, talking about UK, uh, you know, uh, Imperial College or maybe, uh, you know, universities like Manchester is there. Uh, uh, similarly, in Canada, uh, if you're talking about computer sciences, if you want to do, you know, a research program in computer sciences or, well, you know, uh, you know uh, subjects like that, uh, McGill will not be a good option. Although McGill is, again, a very high ranked university, but in that case, I would say Waterloo. Because Waterloo has uh, more, uh, you know, I would say research inclination towards computer sciences and engineering fields. Similarly, UBC or Toronto for that matter, but I'll not recommend McGill for that, right? McGill I'll recommend to someone who wants to go for a management or a, or a you know, a social science related program. Uh, next up, online courses and programs. I think we, I already had this question uh, asked by someone in the, in the audience. Uh, Right. So online courses and programs do help you with the, uh, you know, amplifying your profile. So uh, it, it will help you gain more insight about the field you want to pursue. And obviously uh, the thumb rule here or the major factor here is uh, would be you should try and check if your university, uh, so let's say you want to go to a certain university, they offer an online program in a similar subject. That kind of works in your favor because it shows the university that you have done your research well. So when you do that, you already mention it on your CV and they know that you already pursue a uh, pursued so-and-so program. Let's say you're applying to NYU. So you have, you know, pursued so-and-so program on edX from NYU. Right. And in that, and, and in, obviously, you know, uh, here I would like to talk about, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the programs may be free but you know they give you an option to get a certificate for you know by paying certain amount of rupees maybe 99 dollars or something like that make sure you get that especially you know if you if you if you're thinking to apply to applying to a top ranking university so that certificate 
should be there because it gives uh, it gives that you know uh, uh, you can document it for certain money you know obviously uh, there's no harm because you know it's it's a matter of your life so when you have that certificate in your hand it shows you know like you know you you have a documented experience of pursuing a certain program so uh, i know i think uh, everyone who's attending the session they know you know what uh, uh, what i would say what uh, sites are there edx is there coursera is there udemy is there you can also check uh, you know uh, university websites uh, where you know they they do offer online programs on their websites as well uh, for someone who wants to go for art and design program uh, there is one very interesting website i want to tell you that is domestica you might not know it uh, it's called uh, it's it, it is spelled as d o m e s t i k a right just just check that website it's amazing it's uh, you know they offer a lot of uh, you know art and design related programs uh, although the language may be a barrier because uh, you know uh, most of the programs offered are in spanish or you know other languages but uh, english uh, uh, subtitles are there so someone who wants to go for art and design domestica is your way to go uh, then we have again you know whole uh, this whole barrage of uh, you know these apps coming in like skillshare is there uh you know if you want to go for a digital marketing course you know get get one program on skillshare you know it's 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 pretty good uh so options are endless go for online programs online courses uh if you get the chance if you can complete it if you interest you i would say go ahead you know it's it's a major profile booster last so we have top tips and tricks uh so i've covered most uh, you know the seven points now just just a few tips and tricks i would say uh, that you should follow uh, one is your resume make sure it's relevant so let's say you're applying to canada or if you're applying to uk uh, check what formats they follow uh, ideally ideally uh, most students i know that you know they they would just submit the cv you know uh, the way they make it uh, you know according to let's say india how we how we work in india but you know uh, lot of countries are there uh, you know uh, where you don't have to mention your date of birth or your marital status or anything like that on your resume make sure you know these small things are taken care of when you're applying to a top canadian university make sure you have the canadian uh, you know cv format in place you know like you look at it and you formulate your cv accordingly because most uh, us and canadian universities require only one page cv you know uh, similarly uk maximum you can go for two pages but make sure you know uh, you omit certain personal details which are not required by most uk employers or universities so make sure you stick to the relevant format obviously make sure it's updated right when you apply it's updated till date and there are no grammatical errors no grammatical errors no punctuation errors make sure make sure everything is is uh, up to date because you know uh, something something uh, might get caught and it, it might not turn in your favor uh, next up sop uh, stick to the word limit like i always say stick to the word limit use good words uh, you know just check if university wants specific information from you this is uh, this is in case with german universities they'll not require a formal sop a lot of universities will not require a formal sop but they'll require you to answer a few questions make sure what university requires so that's a form of a kind of an sop only but you know there are some relevant questions you, which you have to answer so uh, stick to the word limit grammatical errors shouldn't be there punctuation should be perfect and it should be engaging uh, uh, if you need help i would say you know uh, contact uh, your counselor at leap scholar or if you want to write your sop yourself you're good to go uh, if you want to check your errors or something i would say you know grammarly is a good a good way to go uh, i'll not say buy a premium version but you know you can just check your uh, you know basic grammatical errors which you can rectify yourself uh, next up we have uh, letters of recommendation equally important make sure they are relevant if you're applying to a computer sciences program uh, make sure it is from a computer science hd hod or someone who taught you computer science uh for someone who uh, who's going for an mba or something professional references uh work you know they they work really well for you uh, make sure uh, they are from uh, someone who's senior to you who managed you not someone who's at a equal pedestal to you you know like not your colleague but i would say someone who's senior your manager or someone like that uh 
last uh, last three tips uh, one is reach out to your professors of dream school so this is very important in case of uh, phd students uh, there's a top tip uh, linkedin is there right uh, and and this applies to everyone irrespective of the program you want to go for but for phd uh, applicants this may this may kind of uh, help them to kind of get an extra edge so reach out to your professors on your of your dream school so very simple go to linkedin search your school you know and then you know look at the employee section uh, under under that school page and then you can just select you know which uh, professor <clears throat> matches your research interest or something like that for someone who's going for a ug program you you know you look up, look up and see you know maybe a business professor or maybe a marketing professor maybe a social sciences professor connect with them don't just send them random requests uh, you know send a personalized note uh, that you know i'm wishing to apply to so and so university where you're teaching uh, you know i want to get in touch with you regarding what all i can do and all that so it gives you a very good professional uh, you know a kind of a uh, it works well for your whole profile overall uh, next up connect with your university alumni again someone who's been there done that uh, someone who's applying uh, applying for an mba at uh, you know a certain university connect with uh, you know university alumni on linkedin they'll give you more idea about you know what is the application procedure like or how it has been for them you know what kind of gmat scores they had what kind of ielts score they had what kind of academic scores they had so most people will be happy to help uh, provided that you send a personalized note just don't send a random connection request and lastly uh, i would say work towards building a well rounded personality or you know it should be holistic not just your academic grades i know they are important you should meet the academic requirements but at the same time uh, your whole personality should be well rounded well rounded all the seven aspects i've covered so it it varies for everyone you don't have to necessarily follow everything but see if you can incorporate most of these points uh, right so let's get back to answering questions now so i think i have around 10 minutes left with me uh, ashwarya uh, tripathi i want to do phd in english uh, ashwarya most universities who accept you know that accept you for a phd will uh, offer you scholarships as well specifically that's in the case uh, that's the case in us uh scholarships are plenty for phd uh i would say even uk for that matter uh but i would say i would say if you if you're looking at scholarships then maybe us would be a better option uh <clears throat> ankita is asking with the 3 years bachelor's degree can i go for an mba and have no work experience done graduation this uh year only ankita you can go for a 3 go for an mba without a work experience in the uk for sure but uh in canada uh in canada i would say there are few universities that offer a masters program to a 3 year bachelor's degree holders uh but you would require you would be required to fulfill certain uh, uh you know other requirements like you know they might ask ask for a gmat score or maybe you no know, work experience but uh, i think that's pretty uh, very very few options and that reminds me you know i've done a video as well uh, you can just check on leap scholar channel uh, there is a video in which i've spoken about uh, you know top universities in canada that accept three years bachelors so i think that was posted somewhere in august so you can check that on the channel lakshmi what is sds and non sds see that's a student direct scheme and non student direct scheme so if you want to go to uh, go to a university uh, or college in canada uh, there are two ways you know you can you can apply as in like see that uh, i would say sds is where you know you enroll at a university and at a college right uh, you pay all the tuition fee you are enrolled at a dli designated learning institution and you meet all the english language requirements so english language requirements in ielts but if you have some other uh, Uh, what do you say? Uh, you know, score like PT or TOEFL or anything else. Then you go under non SDS. Um, can you please tell a few Canadian universities accepting admission in summer intake? Archana, there are a lot of universities out there. Depending on your program, uh, 
but the prominent ones would be uh, summer intake. Of course, you cannot accept at top, uh, you know, you cannot expect that at top university, but a uh, lot of Canadian universities would offer summer intake that is May. Uh, but you would have to check. Uh, I think the a few ones which I have on my mind is UCW, then uh, Royal Roads University, uh, then I think even uh, um, some some universities in Nova Scotia would have Cape Breton or something. But main take is not very very. I would say uh, you don't have much options. So I would say go for a winter January or a fall September intake because you'll have more options. Tanvir is asking, I have a BSc biology. I'm a final year student. Which stream should I choose for study abroad? Is MBA suitable for me? Uh, Tanvir, MBA at this point of time, if you're doing, you know, if you're working, uh, you know, you're, you're pursuing a biology program, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a relevant program for you. Uh, you can choose a similar program. And for, for this, I would say Canada would be a good option. Uh, but if you can get some work experience in, uh, you know, uh, working uh, you know in in an in industry or a company relevant to your profile to your undergraduate program then obviously a masters in management or an mba would be a pro would be wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem in countries like uk because uk is pretty flexible uh, and we can kind of explain that in the sop but for canada it would be a little bit bit of a problem <clears throat> uh, krish mehta is asking i'm in 12th commerce with maths uh, Thinking for September 2022 intake, UK, US financial courses, what should I start with? Uh, Krish, the first thing to start with is, you know, just start preparing for your IELTS program. Uh, uh, sorry, your IELTS exam, uh, because you're thinking of UK and US. And uh, given that uh, most universities are open for September 2022, if you are, uh, you know, targeting top universities, then UCAS for UK is open, then US universities are also open, start preparing right now. You should also start working on your SOPs, LORs, speak to your uh, teachers to get predictive mark uh, grades so that you can apply because UCAS is open and it closes on January, uh, I think January 29th, uh, 2022, if you're thinking of applying to a top uni. And most universities in the US, they I think they also close by February, the top ranking ones, but you do have some options after that. But uh, I cannot guarantee if you can get the university you're wishing to go for. Best time to apply for Germany scholarships. Uh, someone who is wanting to go to Germany. See, Germany is a very, very straightforward country to, uh, I would say, if you have the relevant information. Uh, there is a website called German Academic Exchange Service. It's called daad.de. .de. Check that website all the universities, all the scholarships are there. It's very simple to use. You don't have to uh, consult anyone for that. It's pretty simple, very straightforward. All, everything is there, including deadlines, the value and whatever information you require. Uh, next up, uh, Sangeeta is asking, I have completed master's in physics with, in 2019, 8.15 CGPA, master's in astronomy and astrophysics, Canada or UK. And further job opportunities. See, both countries are good, Sangeeta. Uh, but uh, I would say if you want to uh, study in Canada, uh, do choose a good ranking university. And uh, UK, obviously, uh, it's 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 a good country to go for physics and all. But have you thought about maybe pursuing pursuing a master's in research? You know that maybe maybe you can choose. Uh, maybe you can. You know, think of that and uh, that might kind of, uh, you know, boost your career a bit. Maybe maybe you can get a, uh, let's say, a job at university or something like that as well at a college. So uh, just, just check out master's in research programs as well. I'll answer two more questions, two, three more questions because it's almost 4 p.m. Uh, but I'll be back next week again. Right. So don't don't worry. Uh, what it takes to get 100% scholarship and living expenses. I would say everything you have, to be honest, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to get 100% scholarship, but 
uh, like like I said, you know, uh, if you've seen my last video as well on YouTube, you require very very good grades, very high percentages, very high uh, test scores. Everything everything is required. Plus, a lot of universities will require you to just to submit, you know, a letter of recommendations as well, and maybe a statement of purpose. Everything. So and plus, you know, uh, even if you have an exceptional profile, uh, luck also matters in this case. But uh, I would highly, I would highly recommend if you're looking at, you know, uh, cutting down our expenses. I also mentioned it in the video that you can look at Scandinavia and Germany as well. Uh, last question I'm going to ask. Uh, sorry, answer. Uh, Right, so scholarship needed. Please let me know. Uh, see, scholarships, we are, uh, I am planning some more videos on scholarship. Uh, so someone who's asking me about scholarships, please uh, just, just keep uh, watching this space for more. Uh, in the next few weeks, I'm coming with more videos on scholarships. Uh, the one you saw last week was just the first one. I'm coming with uh, 100 plus scholarships soon. So something uh, you should look forward to. And for that, please subscribe to the channel and don't miss out on that video. It's going to be 100 plus scholarships and uh, it's for everyone, uh, you know, and it, it will cover most of the countries. Cool. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, thank you for uh, attending today's session. I'm so sorry if I couldn't answer, uh, you know, every question, but I'll be back. We're going to make this a weekly affair. Uh, you can ask me questions uh, on my, uh, you know, in the comments as well. I'll try and answer them. Uh, I do, and I do try and answer all of the questions. But please hold on for a few days if I do, if you don't get a reply. But I do, I do reply to each one of you. I'll be back next Tuesday with another interesting topic, and I'll, I'll again answer all your questions. Thank you so much, and uh, you guys have a good day. And I'll see you next week. And keep watching the videos on YouTube. Thank you so much.